Hey family, it's Mama Bear Homestead. So today I just want to kind of talk you through um, my thought process for, you know, getting the space outside ready. You know, frost is here, colder days, rain is around the corner, snow is around the corner. For some of you, you're already seeing that. Right now we're going through heavy, heavy frost right now. And so I got my garden right now is kind of all buttoned up, right? I've mulched stuff. I've overwintered stuff. I've pulled stuff. Um, I've covered, you know, my winter crops that are still going, you know, things that are still making it in the frost. You know, I've covered those things. So I'm to the point where, you know, your winter garden is all buttoned up. It's all pretty. And you're kind of just watching, watching the stuff grow that's still growing. Um, and we're not, you're not really doing a whole lot, right? There's not a whole lot of harvesting. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, maybe there's onesie, twosie things that are at the end of their cycle that you're getting ready to pull. But for the most part, this is the quieter time of garden, gardening in general, right? And I'm enjoying it, but it's not really that quiet. Because for those of you that grow food and are doing this, you realize... There's not that much quiet time, right? All this is is time now to prepare for spring, to prepare for the next season. And I think what I want to talk about today is the importance of really taking a look as you figure out what your plan is going to be for spring. And in spring, you know, what's your plan? Get, making sure you have your seeds, making sure you have your dirt, your fertilizer, all these things, right? Get them now, okay? Tools, gloves, whatever it is for your garden season, get that stuff now one a lot of that stuff is on sale um lower prices um, because they know that a lot of people are not you know there's not a ton of gardening going on right now so some of those prices are a little bit cheaper than they will be when spring hits um but it's also about thinking about what's going on in the world and figuring out how you can get more food grown right what is your situation you know we're on just under a half acre um we last year you know i did a whole side patio pretty much patio garden um had some raised beds had a ton of stuff in pots um but wasn't really able to venture out into my yard my actual space yet because we had a huge septic if you've been following me for a while we had a huge septic upgrade well that is done now it's really established where that's at what part of the you know property that takes up how big it truly is is there anything i can still grow near it on it whatever um and so now it becomes the layout of the land you know if you're new to this like me um it's very very important for you to get literally a piece of paper out and just doodle and sketch where big items are going to be so we were waiting for the septic to be done so that we could see kind of the layout of where that was going to be at and what that was going to leave us with and now it becomes where do the bigger items go where do does um the food growing happen the food forest where does the greenhouse go where do you know we've got the chickens laid out but where do the other things that we're going to get later go right where does the compost go right so there's a lot of things to think about more than just, hey, I'm going to do some, you know, some cute raised garden beds. I'm going to make three and I'm going to put them here because I saw that on Pinterest and it looked cute. It's more than that. OK, layout is extremely important and layout is important, too, for the food that you plan to grow, for companion planting, for bringing pollinators. All of that matters. Right. And so it's important to think about that stuff now. Think about the layout of your entire property of where you're going to have things at and then the layout um, closer in where your actual food is at. And think about long term. Think about non-traditional things, right? Where can you put you know, uh, medicinal plants that just look like flowers and plants to people and don't even look like vegetable stuff, right? Utilizing everything. We're not here to grow grass, baby. We're here to grow food, okay? And so this is the year of growing food. How much can we grow? And making that plan conducive to growing the, the, most, um, the most amount of food that you can get in your space, in your area. And think up and think the edging that's pretty with trees and edges and bushes and stuff like that, but be throwing in medicinal stuff, right? Um, so, and perennials and things that will continue to come back every year so that the next season is not as hard as the last because you're implementing these perennials and different layers that are gonna continue to come back, right? Um, so I think that it's, it's important to plan. And that's kind of where I'm at is, what's the layout? Um, once you get the garden layout, what's the important foods? 
what are the foods that are going to give you and your family the most um, nutritional value, right? Um, what are the foods that have the most nutritional value but are filling as well, right? Do you have the space? How do you make that work? What does it look like? What are the items that you need? Do you need the cattle panels, right? Um, what wood do you need? Do you, are you buying um, or making your raised beds, you know? Are you tilling the ground? What does it look like for you, right? Think about greenhouse. You know, I think that everybody's going to have to deal with um, the possibility of colder temperatures as climate changes. And so I think that it's important to get a greenhouse, okay? It doesn't matter if you are in a hot location now or you're in a cold location. Greenhouses are very, very important, okay? Um, so I think it's important. And do you buy that now? Do you purchase plans and make it? Do you just go off the cuff and build something? something um, you've got to get those plans now because spring baby is here before you know it okay and I think that that's the biggest part of trying to like when you say when you have people like me they're like we're gonna homestead and I'm not living on some kind of traditional farm I'm living on my plot my property plot uh, you know less than half acre and I'm saying to myself I know that I can grow enough food here for me and my family I know I can and I'm not going to let people say I can't do it but to in order to be successful with that you have to be organized you have to have a plan so that you can maximize now can you just go out there and do whatever you want for all you my earthy people that just want to just go with the flow you absolutely can right but when we talk about maximizing you know what we have what we've been given that's what i'm talking about right and so now's the time to talk to the experts talk to your friends that know how to do stuff right i've been talking to all types of people right now about indoor gardening because i'm trying to get that started right um i'm at the beginning phase of that and i want to keep that going and i want to get the greenhouse going and i want to maximize the layout of our piece of property right even though it's small you know a lot of people are like this is not a homestead but the idea is to be self-sufficient on that little piece of you know backyard you know and show that anybody with a backyard can do this right you don't need acres and acres and acres and acres you know to be able to um grow food for you and your family okay so prepare now um for growing Whatever the plan is, be thinking, how do you maximize that? So for those of you that have been doing this forever and you're like, I've been gardening, like I know what I'm doing. Well, then I would say challenge yourself to expanding it if you can, because I know some people can't because of age or whatever, um, or it's just too much and they just can't do it anymore for whatever reason. But I would say... Um, this is the year and and for those of you that are like me that you have just started this is maybe your first or second year gardening you're still learning all types of stuff about gardening you're definitely not an expert that is me okay um but let's learn and do this together and i think when we do this for for people like us it's about planning before we execute and it's about how do we get more food grown? This last year, I've said so many times, this was my experimental year, right? We just got back to Washington State. Let's let's grow food. Let's do some transplanting. Let's do some direct sow. Let's let's see how the frost does with certain like I've been experimenting this whole time. I've been throwing stuff in the dirt and leaving it out there that's not even supposed to be grown right now. I've been mixing the seasons. I've been doing my own thing because I want to test the waters. Like this was my year to do that. And now that I've tested some stuff, some stuff turned out really good and I learned a lot of stuff. And so now it becomes how can I grow more food, right? As I do that layout in that backyard, how can I maximize the amount of food and the amount of harvest that I'm going to get um, this next year? And every year with the way things are going, that should be part of the goal is how can I make more of it? Even if you're a family that's only doing two or three crops out there, like you're doing, let's say you do flowers, you have some landscaping, you have some medicinal plants and flowers and herbs, you got a nice herb garden going, but you only have maybe a handful of, 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 um, crops that you bona fide crops that you're growing, you know, say your tomatoes are pretty popular, peppers, right? Maybe you're doing potatoes, maybe you're not, um, squash, whatever, right? Um, and you're an expert at that and continue to do that. But 
what are the other things that you know your family will eat like crazy, right? So like, so for me, I know we will eat potatoes like crazy. So my thing this whole last year was experimenting with how to grow potatoes. How can we get the most potatoes? Um, and now we're moving to, not moving, but we're moving out to the backyard and the expansion and what's the plan? And it becomes, okay, now how do I maximize this potatoes uh, situation so that we can get the most? Um, what does that look like? And uh, so that we, I can continue that that's the one crop that I can count on. Okay. And there's a lot of ways to mess it up where you don't get big potatoes, you get little potatoes, right? So you've got to do the research. So I say all this to say there's no downtime. Your garden, your winter garden is nice and buttoned up and it's looking cute. But now, baby, it's game on right now to get ready for spring. It's the holidays. You know, a lot of people are inside. I try to just go out and walk the property and kind of just dream, right? Just dream where I envision certain things going, okay? And the things that I want to make me continue to love it and to want to be out there. And it's your space. It's your world, right? And so um, prepare to grow more food. That is the name of the game. That is the goal for this next season, um, growing more food, growing, um, you know, and the days of, Hey, I had a raised garden bed and I maybe grew three or four things in that one garden bed. Those days are over. I'm talking about a garden bed, um, is for one crop, or if it's a large, you know, raised bed, maybe a couple crops, but, um, really, really concentrating on more production. That is the name of the game. So, let me know in the comments below your guys's um goals you know what as you guys move forward with you know you're buttoning up your winter garden and you're moving forward with even winter harvest and into spring and the planning for spring what are the things that you're doing now to prepare you know is it just ordering your seeds is it just um getting your things you know um your tools and things like that. I mean, with inflation and the way things are going right now and with shortages and with people not being able to find certain things, I tell you what, you know, your garden stuff, you better make sure that you have your garden stuff like on lock, that you have all the things that you want um, that make your life easier with gardening and your gardening tools and with your favorites that you use a lot, having a backup so that when that tool busts or breaks or it gets it's lost or whatever right you lose it in the garden that you have your backups right um simple things like backup gloves like that stuff matters it seems so trivial it seems so little like it's not necessary but that stuff it, it matters you know having your garden hats and your your different harvest baskets and, and and aprons and just different stuff okay your hoe tools you know the stuff that you're always your go-to stuff or breaking up the ground and um rinse and repeat right like you you need those items, right? Um, so think about that stuff now. And again, if you can afford it, if you can get it in your budget now, it's going to be cheaper now than it is um, going forward, right? Going into the growing season. You know, I, I it surprises me because places like Lowe's, Home Depot, all these places, they explode during spring and winter. I mean, they just explode their outdoor space. And then you go now and it's just completely, completely dead, right? Um, so change the game. Like right now, you should be going to your local. There's local nurseries that are still there that still have tons of plants, indoor plants, outdoor plants, trees. Um, so go there because if you're the type that just loves to just go and, and see what plants are there and trees and I, you know, and to help you dream and to get that stuff going for spring and that planning, it helps plan too when you know what your what your local nursery has, and they'll show you stuff. You know, your nurse no, local nurseries. I go to a local nursery and there's a section that is their clearance section, and I like literally. There's a lot of times I don't go nowhere else on the nursery except right there where the clearance rows are. Then I get trees from there, bushes, all types of stuff, right? And so. um I don't know. I'm very, very excited for this next season and to get started, but there's a lot to do and it starts with planning, baby. So 
I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day, a beautiful week, um, getting ready for the holidays. I appreciate you if you are here. I know I do not have a lot of subscribers over here. If you're not following me yet on my other channel, which is Home um, Homestead, which is uh, Mama Bear Prepping, that was my my original channel. Um, I talk about preparedness over there, a lot of preparedness and prepping. Um, we follow a lot of news and stuff that's happening, current events, and how that changes and how that drives how you prepare your family for different things that might come your way. Um, so thank you if you follow me over there and you follow me over to this channel. Um, um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting me over here. Okay. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.